is. How's it going, everybody? Today, we're going to be reviewing the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window. That's a mouthful. Try saying that 10 times fast. We're going to talk about all the things. We're going to talk about the mystery, the murder, the, 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 the Christians and their bells, the whole jam. So if you want to find out what we have to say, tune on in and listen to The First Ones to Die. Hey, everyone. Welcome to The First Ones to Die podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We hope you're having a great week so far. Uh, We are going to talk about a little TV today, but before we do, how are you both doing, Alex, Jerome? <laughs> I'm sorry, I Alex was is having a good time argument. over here. I'm it, sorry, it, about uh, the argument we had before this podcast. We're not going to anyway, get into it. We're uh, not. We're going to move on from right. It. But I don't know. It's still just making me laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> nothing you said was funny. I I didn't mean. To laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long week. I learned some stuff about Stuart Little I wasn't ready to. Uh, uh, Jerome's dying. And <laughs> that's pretty much it for me. Just work Stuart Little now and Cheddar, who's asleep always. Because that's what that's what orange cats do. They're either you're crazy acting like crackheads running around the place all the time, or they're just dead asleep. They should have like one brain cell, but anyway, how you been doing, Jonathan? Good, good. Uh, the weather's starting to warm up here, which I am very appreciative of. That's very much brightening the mood around here. Uh, so I'm very happy about that. And yeah. It's gotten windier here. Oh, really? Yeah, it's gotten, I feel like it's gotten less cold, but it's definitely gotten like windier. Mm. how you been doing Jerome? i'm good <clears throat> i've been um kind of just like in my in my zone of like watching my shows been watching the book of boba fett been watching peacemaker uh euphoria i know i said this last week but i'm i'm still on the train i'm still like but i'm also on the lookout for like a new show to watch at the same time to uh once my shows end <laughs> Um, you need to keep this consistency of just like entertainment to watch. Every time somebody mentions the book of Boba Fett to me, I think of Boba Tea. <laughs> and I always associate with that. And I'm like, why are you watching a show? Is it about the creation of Boba? Oh, Boba Fett, right. That that character from Star Wars. Mm-hmm. So it takes me a second to remember that it's an actual character and not Boba Tea. But, uh, easy to get confused right? easy to confuse the two i've only had like boba I, tea once in my life really really it's mm-hmm. good i've had it multiple times having boba tea boba tea's dope get more until you get tired of sucking on the tapioca balls well it's what the, the key is to try and like not drink all of the liquid before you get uh uh before or rather to get all the tapioca balls first before you drink all the liquid uh i will or at least a good chunk of them the tiktok i just recently saw of somebody ah. drinking boba tea um i'll post it on instagram wherever this guy gets it and he's like oh i had boba tea for the first time somebody told me to get the little boba beads at the bottom he's like i think they're soft and so he when he pokes it he takes a big drink not knowing he's like oh i think they're supposed to dissolve because they told me to shake it not knowing that he takes a big drink and you could just see all of it going down and he like spits it all out all over his car because <laughs> he's like oh my god something choked me and he's like my car he, he took just the biggest oh it was so funny i thought you were going to talk about the one in which someone got boba tea and then they try and stick the straw through but they go too hard and stick it all the way through the entire cup it's just all the boba tea spills out the bottom (laughs) how hard are you like hitting that's too much force you gotta know that's too much the top is literally a just like a little it's a thin plastic sheet (laughs) yeah like you don't need that much force you gotta calm down People get too excited. Um, but you just probably finished the show now. 
going into what we were watching. Good transition. Too. Wow. Yeah, so I got it. I was paying attention. Expert, expert, masterful work. That deserves an award. <laughs> the show we are talking about. Are condescending, week... Jonathan? Alex no, I, I... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, maybe your praise of other people is condescending, Ooh. but mine. <laughs> Mine is genuine. Mine is genuine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> this You're is kidding that is genuine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. This anyway. Let's get to damn Kristen Bell. Okay, this is called <laughs> the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window. <laughs> First off, I love Kristen Bell. Uh, I watched her in uh, the Good Place and that Excellent was my f- yeah she was so great that was one of my favorite shows when it ended i cried they did it so well i thought you um, were mentioned frozen no oh yeah nobody <laughs> needs to mention frozen <laughs> um why not you gonna get some frozen that was fans who are- so although did you hear we off. although did you hear we don't talk about bruno has surpassed let it go absolutely that I is, still have not watched Encanto. I need. One, I need to. As well. I it made me feel things. Like I almost cried a little bit too. That one's just like a song you can truly move to. Let it go. You're kind of just belching out by yourself in the like privacy. But let uh, we don't talk about Bruno. It's something like you dance to, you move to, you feel it. It's got the Latin flavor to it. It's such a good, it's such a good song. But um, Kristen Bell, I have always enjoyed uh, her work. So. She was, I, when you told me that she was in the show, I was like, oh, it's going to be really good. Actually, you said it was originally a movie. And then I started watching it. I'm like, this is a show. Wait, did I say it was a movie? Didn't Mm -hmm. you say it was? Yeah, you said it was like a movie. Well, you said you weren't sure, I think is what you said. Mm. Well, the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window. uh, Oh, apparently it was originally titled The Woman in the House. Uh, But it's an American dark comedy thriller on Netflix about uh, a heartbroken woman named Anna. Uh, she is unsure of whether or not she witnesses a murder and the events following, uh, she's trying to figure out what the heck is going on across the street in the house. Stars Kristen Bell as Anna, Michael Ely as Douglas, Tom Riley, Mary Holland, and Cameron Britton. So, If you are not familiar with the way we kind of dissect and recap and review movies and TV, first we talk about our non-spoiler thoughts. So in this section, we'll give our overall thoughts of the show. Did we like it? Did we not like it? And then we'll go into a spoiler section where we'll dive into the uh, plot twists and uh, things like that of the show. So firstly, what did you guys think of the show? Jerome, you look really eager, so I'll start with you. Uh, I like it. I, <laughs> I think it's because it reminds me so much of Search Party, which was the last dark comedy uh, thriller type show I watched. Um, but this show can get away with a lot more because it's on uh, a streaming service instead. Of, Search Party originally aired on TBS. Um, oh, okay. So it kind of had to be a little more, um, like it was TV 14. Pulled back, yeah. It had to be pulled back um, until HBO Max bought it and then they could kind of go a little crazier with it. Um, but even still, like, and even Search Party, like the escalation is so crazy in that show. Um, so having that experience and then going into this show, I was expecting a lot of um, things uh, as far and I can't get into them too much without going into spoilers, but um, for the most part, though, this show is really good. Actually, it's uh, very funny. Um, it has uh, a great cast and uses its actors and actresses very well, as far as like building suspense, but then also like having that nice balance of comedy and comedic timing in there, both physical and uh, and dialogue stuff. Um, I asked, also apologies to Tom Riley because for the majority of the show I kept thinking he was Andrew Scott because <laughs> I feel like when Tom yeah. Riley shaves he looks like Andrew Scott a lot 
He also yeah, he also I looks and talks. He also looks and talks like um Ben uh um what's his name from uh Shadow and Bone and um I know you're talking about Ben Barnes. Remember his last ben, Barnes. ben Barnes. Ben Barnes. Yes, I follow him. He he also looks and talks like Ben Barnes. A he does. Another thing about it, yeah, he does. He looks so, a lot like Ben Barnes. So he is. Uh, so apologies to you, uh, but you did a great job, <laughs> Tom Ryan, and the kids too. You know, a lot of times you don't get great kid actors, and it's because they're so young. You know, they're still learning and getting into it. But the kid actors in this were uh, pretty okay. Um, so overall, uh, I think it was a pretty decent show. Uh, definitely am curious uh, what they'll do for a second season. <laughs> um, but it, I mean, this the way the show ends off, it, it does have a great setup for a second season. So it'd be really interesting. Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts. Alex. Um, I ended up enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would because uh, I also thought it was going to be it is kind of like a parody, but it kind of had the same vibe as um, Scream did, where it was kind of mocking the original thing it was created from, you know, the horror film, this mystery of, you know, the sad widow or the sad divorcee, sad woman drinking that giant glass of wine, you know, just watching people from our windows. So it had mm-hmm. that same vibe of like the mocking tones and the kind of predictable nature. But then at the same time, There were plot twists I wasn't expecting. It ended up being really good. And again, I've said this before, I like Kristen Bell's acting uh, from her acting in The Good Place to this. It has this great chaoticness to it. We're kind of expecting a certain nature of the character, kind of a more sad and, you know, withdrawn character, but she's actually very outgoing in this weird way you know, and she's kind of intrusive in certain spots that you're like, oh, you think you, she end up being more inclusive and, you know, when interacting, especially with the little girl. Um, and I'm trying not to give away two spoilers. And I do like the play, the way they use mental illness, it feels more real too than it, you know, just it being a kind of like a plot device. It was actually a very important thing to the character and it was taken more seriously, which I do appreciate. And it wasn't mocked at all. Mm-hmm. But overall, I ended up enjoying the show. So that was good. And I agree, just all the acting. And you're right now, I see it. Now I can't think. And now I just see Ben Barnes in the episodes. <laughs> like I had a distinction. Now I'm like, no, he looks so much like Ben Barnes. He really right. does. See, so I, I, had, I thought Andrew Scott the entire time. I see Ben Barnes a little more. To the yeah. point where I kept calling him Andrew Scott. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom Riley. You look like Ben Barnes and Andrew Scott's love child. Um, yes. Love it. Uh, what about you, Jonathan? What was your take on the show? So I agree with both of you. I had such a fun time watching it. I was looking forward to tuning in to every single episode. Um, when I first went into it, I thought it was going to be a complete parody because those were like the type of words that I was seeing um, as in, I guess, press and and things that I was seeing about the show. But it actually had a a pretty solid plot with those comedic elements kind of tied into it. I liked the kind of balance that they had with the comedy and the actual thrillerness or the plot of it all. Um, the comedic elements I was fond of and I laughed at, but I was also invested in the plot as well. I thought all of the cast was very likable, even the people that at some points we were supposed to not like. I, I, I really liked uh, those people as well. And overall, I, I just had a good time. I enjoyed consuming it and I had uh, a fun time watching it. Uh, there was also, oh yeah, also all of the different nods to some of the different uh, like thriller uh, movie tropes I really appreciated. And um, yeah, I guess I'll touch on, I guess, or we'll touch on some of them as we get into some of the spoilers as well. Which leads us to the spoiler section. Wow, what do you know about that? Uh, okay, where should we 
I guess start. Um, do we want to start at the end? The person who well, who were y'all suspects? Because mine was forever the handyman, and then with like, the mailbox, the, yeah, and then <laughs> like for, since the beginning, I'm like, ever since the usual suspects, you can never assume the one with the simple mind is, is innocent. All right, he's he's probably also he's the one who did it. And then, like, at the end, I was almost about to be justified. I was like, yes, I called it from the very beginning of the show. <laughs> but then you noticed they had, like, like half an hour left in the episode. So <laughs> I just figured it was just, it's a comedy. Because it took me a long time to remember that it was a comedy. Especially when she start, she talks about how her, her um, daughter died. And she's like, it was a guy named Massacre Mike. And I'm like, Massacre Mike? <laughs> that 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 is not his real name. She's making this up. This is all this, this, like this. That's got to be a joke. And then I think it was a couple episodes later. I was like, "All right, it probably was a joke because it's a comedy <laughs> as well as a thriller." <laughs> I also like that whole idea my of bad. like they left my eight year old daughter in a cell with a, a, a with cannabis, a, a, a cannibal too. Well, also awesome the fact of like. I'm gonna bring bring my water, daughter to work day. I'm gonna bring her in on an interview with a serial killer. Like even if he didn't kill her, that's gonna scar her for life to hear this man talk about his experiences murdering people. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, what what do you think it? Which I mean, later you find out he's just an he's just an idiot himself because the whole time he's talking to Ann on the phone, the dude's sitting across from him. Like, I'm sorry, are we not doing my session? right now my 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 suspects so i had two my first one i feel like it was about episode four or five and it was the daughter little emma that was my first suspect because i'm like she's a little too perfect she's a little too goody two shoes so i'm like and and the connective tissue between um granted these may not have been the reasons but the fact that like, um, you know, this new woman has come into his dad's life. He was getting it on with the teacher. So maybe he didn't want the teacher to be, See, be in. I already maybe she didn't those, want the teacher to. I knew those things were lies. Cause I'm like, uh, you're making up roles now. And then at some point I forget which part of the story it is, but she starts making up like characters start showing up randomly in the story. I'm like, are you making up characters now? Now at this point, you're just writing a fictional tale. All right, you don't even know. You're talking about from Anna's perspective. Yeah, from she, Anna's perspective. I'm just like, you're just making up characters, Anna. You know what you need to do? Stop drinking and go to a retreat. <laughs> I like that they made one of biggest uh, one of Neil's biggest reveals of his secret was that he was a ventriloquist. <laughs> like I wasn't prepared that was for that. Yeah, I was like expecting something else or something weird. Like I don't know, honestly. They're like, okay, he's gonna reveal he's actually having an affair with somebody else, or that he was the main reason, you know, for his wife's death or something. <laughs> right. I do ventricle. I did I actually. Oh, oh, sorry. sorry. With the dolls, you were say, expecting the dolls. No, no, no. Instantly though, uh, when he was like like the first episode when he's like yeah my wife died she drowned and, and i said behind like after you finished that line i was like because i did it because <laughs> i'm like what, i'm pretty I, sure <laughs> i so i i lied my first my first suspect was was uh the husband was neil uh but that was short-lived because it was you know it was then kind of implied or, or he was proven not to be because it, it would have been too obvious if it yeah, wasn't yeah yeah I kind um, of and thought it third... might be him just because of the obviousness of it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, oh, they're supposed to be going like for kind of a sight. spoofy. They're kind of going for a spoof style. So it must be the obvious character. Who is, right. It always is in every film. Or right. <laughs> uh, and then my, my third suspect was, I was basically uh, suspecting the, the entire cast. But my third one was uh, was Sloan, her friend. Because I'm like, Why she's- would Sloan do it? I don't know because, but but that was quickly that was quickly like um, faded debunked, out because, yeah. yeah, debunked because she wasn't in the show enough. I don't feel like it would have come out of left field. Um, but I'm like, she's a little bit too good to be true. And at one point, she says, "I'm a ride or die. I'll do anything for you. Do you need me to?" When she's breaking her out of the um, jail, she's like, "Do you need me to do anything for you?" So I'm like, if she's willing to do anything for her then does yeah, that include that point, murder she, she had already the body had already been found and all that stuff 
and it's like and that's before because she had remember sloan's the one who shuts down uh anna even looking after looking at this girl on instagram she's just like yeah maybe put the phone down and stop stalking your neighbor and his girlfriend maybe that was a tactic for the how reverse psychology (laughs) she wanted her to look at her more Maybe she didn't want her to look at the photos to see that she's in the background. <laughs> it's like one, she oh, she like zooms in on one part and there she is in the back. Uh, but uh, if you have, or, or did you say all your yeah. theories, Alex? Yeah, uh, I didn't really have Alex. theories too much. I kind of just thought it was going to be end up being the guy, a little mm. bit, or it was going to end up being the girlfriend faking the death, kind of like how what the guy had said. It, her friend, what was his name? Oh, he was uh, Rex. Rex, yeah, kind of the way he had plotted it out. I was like, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, I could see that doing it. And then there was, you know, part of one of the references they did was the rear, rear window? Rear, mm-hmm. rear, rear window. So um, 10 times fast. I can barely like, say it once. <laughs> normal. Speed. Rear window, rear, ooh. Um, where it's that whole like everything's in plain sight the windows were open you were able to see you're getting murdered kind of feels uh fishy you know it had that element of yeah and especially in those type of neighborhoods people are always watching all the time well that was my thing where i'm just like why is the window open like because at first it's tom when he's or uh sorry neil when he's like in the window he takes shirt off showing off the muscles i'm like you ain't gonna close the curtains like i i close my i close my blinds every time i'm preparing to go to the shower so tom just showing off the abs then his girlfriend behind him like the next day she takes off her her clothes oh, yeah, she was her just... bra, i'm like what is with y'all and not closing the curtains for these windows <laughs> I, f- I feel like that is also another reference to that trope in thrillers and horrors where People just leave their blinds open yeah, for the world open, to see. Just wide then, open. <laughs> you can see everything. <laughs> like, no matter if you're in a good neighborhood or not, like, I don't need people knowing what I'm doing. Right? Exactly. It's like, you don't want people staring at you, like, in your in your underwear or whatever. <laughs> also, who's just standing around like that, too, for him and her? Like, who's just standing half-dressed, just doing <laughs> random things? Like, if I'm going to take a shower, it's uh, I'm going to go take a shower. I'm addressing right. and in the shower. I'm not doing things little by little. It's going to happen or it's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, but if, if you haven't seen the show, the person who actually committed, it seemed like all of the murders in the town, uh, was the daughter of Neil, Emma, the girl across the street, or the girl in the wind. No, she wasn't the girl. In no, the she was the girl no. across the street. No, no she the was woman. It's the woman across the street. So the woman is in reference to Lisa, who dies. The girl who sits in the window is Anna. That's not sitting. The woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window. So yeah. Kristen Bell, you said. Sitting. Oh well, yeah, she's girl. She's girl in the window. She did anything but sitting. She was constantly murdering. <laughs> There's a constant wave of murders. Yeah. Are you talking about Emma or Anna? Emma. That's what I'm saying. Anna's Anna. A woman. No, Anna's you said the girl, the girl in the window sitting and in the window. You said regardless, sitting. she's in the window. <laughs> well, I was saying she wasn't doing any sitting. <laughs> yeah, Anna was in the window. <laughs> Anna was in the house. No, the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window. Anna was Lisa's... in the house. No, Anna's the girl male in the dog window. nipples. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> There was no lead up. There was no contest. You were just I flat out just say <laughs> this reminded me of our conversation that we were having before. <laughs> yeah, but you said just that like, to provide some context is now that's just out there. Um, I don't want to anyway. We'll just leave that as it is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, we'll leave no, the leave that, audience to we'll speculate. Leave that one as it is. No. They're just splitting hairs about no, the title. But what I'm saying is. It's, no, it's the woman. The woman across in the house is okay. in reference to is to reference to Lisa because she was the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window who was Anna because all she does is sit in her white chair looking out the window at the house across the street 
with the neighbor who she wants to blow her back out. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was kind of rooting for them too. I thought they were going <laughs> to <I think so. laughs> Which, to Anna's credit, she did get her back blown out, just by, not by Neil. Like, Rex was out here doing work. They was on every surface in the house. The stairs, which, the kitchen counter. <laughs> which, <laughs> which, which also, I noticed Kristen Bell, she was having love in all the flavors because she I had know, Michael right? Ely. <laughs> she had uh, Rex. He was Latino. And then she had the white dude as well. So, or, well, well, she that didn't was have in her him, imagination. Was, right, you know, but, right. But still, I see what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> and in and out like free samples just everybody get a taste <laughs> this review is unhinged already <laughs> you all are unhinged I'm just, you're having a drink <laughs> um speaking of michael ely why did they have him look like he was a professor from the Yo, 1990s? I was so prepared for him to be the murderer because I'm like, ain't no black man look like that. <laughs> what in the world do you wear? What is with that hair? I can't even <laughs> recall what he looks like. Now, brother. <laughs> he had the glasses. He was oh, always right. wearing like a tweed uh, coat. Also, I love when she when the reveal comes about like, yeah, Buell, he, he was my first patient. Like, what did he do? He killed somebody with a claw hammer. Okay, this you didn't feel the me the need to mention that before we hired him. Well, I figured you didn't want to hire him. You damn right, we didn't want to hire. Him. <laughs> what did I mean? You shut up about an old you know patient. Get him a second chance. And he never the fixed the mailbox. Not- Just the level of calm he says it with, like she's dumb for feeling like that's a threat to her child. I'm like, I see why y'all divorced. You clearly don't have no common sense. Good God. <laughs> doesn't really yeah, have the thought process of like, mm, this might upset her. You know, finding out that there's a person who ate people working on our mailbox <laughs> continuously. I, I thought it was kind of, what was it called? Uh, uh, very, like, very, like, lazy in the way that everyone just believes Anna when she says that Emma's the killer. Which I'm like, I, I was mean, like, what evidence did she have? Right. I'm like, what evidence do you have to suggest that? Because they were all that. against her the whole show. And I'm like, Buell is pretty simple. I don't even know if he would remember. Honestly, it <laughs> all just Emma looks like... attacked him. So, you know what I mean? Just, honestly, at the end, it probably would just look like she just mass murdered everybody. Mm-hmm. And then mass and then kill the child who was right. trying to defend herself. Like, because you know what when, I mean? she, like, when the little girl jumped on her, technically she did grab that weapon, so all her fingerprints are on that weapon now, too. So she her mm-hmm. fingerprints are, yeah, it's not just Emma's, it's hers, too. Right. Um, I don't, that always is, though, the, how it is after these shows and movies and things like that. The person they always suspected ends up not being it, and everybody's just like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, we we get it. It was the most unlikely character that happened to be it. Um, well, at first I didn't think they believed her because everyone, and that was the joke, but I didn't think it was the joke. I thought it was going to be something dark at the end where like they keep saying the same things and she keeps saying the same dialogue. So I was like, do they have her in like a psych ward or something? And this is like all she says now because she's like snapped. And he just every time people come in, it's like, "How you feeling?" Like a Mack truck, and like I got hit by a Mack truck, diamond by that. a nine year old, and I'm just like, "I'm sorry, is she broken?" Like <laughs> I know she repeats it again, and I feel like that's a line that people use. Uh, I've heard that line a lot in movies. It has been used feel? a lot in movies. I feel like I, I, got, like I got, hit got hit by a Mack, Mack truck. truck, and it's always a Mack truck. It's no no because that's a no naked brand truck. that everybody knows what a Mack truck is. They don't know. <laughs> What I always wonder now, but though seeing the end when they're on the pl- like it's a year later on the plane, you know they're going wherever, and she sees that murder victim in the bathroom. Is she now having a psychic power? Is this another mental trip? What is going on with her? Find out I'm- in season two in the show called The Woman Who or the Girl Who Sits Who Sits on the Plane. Uh, the, the girl, girl on the plane. In- next you can't even the original, next- here original it is. title. Here the it woman is. on the plane. No, no, no. It's going to be the woman who's, who's uh, the woman in seat 2A by the girl in the window or something like that. I don't know. It'll be close to that, probably. 
because she says that specifically. She says the woman in two A. Man, there was no woman in two A. What? But the plane will land. So two A, the woman who sat in two A in Bermuda now. Um, that's what I was wondering because I'm like, all right, before it was just you know hallucinations. I get that. I've had them. They're scary. They're real, kind of. But like, they're not great. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have anybody want to experience that that anyway. is my thing when she's like dumped the alcohol i was like good for you anna you know stopping your drinking problem getting back on track then she started dumping the pills i was like whoa, whoa what are you doing you, you no, still no, those do were have yeah. hallucinations like you you need those don't don't, right. don't don't those weren't the problem the problem was the alcohol mixed with those. the mixing the mixing right <laughs> what are you doing you still need your prescriptions i don't i always hate that part when people dump their like psych meds um, it reminds me, going back to TikTok, it reminds me of those things where people are like, oh, I don't want to take pills. They'll dull my sparkle. But like the sparkle is staring off into space for 20 minutes because you lose yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, no, you need the pills. <laughs> take the pills. <laughs> Leave the alcohol alone. That was a good move, but the pills are too far because you're clearly already hallucinating on the meds, going off the meds. You're going to hallucinate more. And mm-hmm. now you're hallucinating people dead on a plane. And I feel like that's like a federal crime, right? To freak people out on a plane. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if it's a federal crime, but it will get you duct taped if American Express has anything to say about it. <laughs> like you, American, American Express. Express. I'm American sorry, Express. I mean American Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that American spirit? Express is like your credit card got declined? <laughs> get the tape. <laughs> <laughs> that's an aggressive that's one way you don't want to miss your belt uh it was it spirit <laughs> airlines that did the duct taping or was it american airlines i think it was I american feel- airlines wait they duct taped a passenger yeah, yeah. they were tripping. when was this like a long time ago like i think last year and no, it's been it happening like, multiple no, was- times last year and 2020 no, it was like in 2018 that's before anything oh like, really okay uh, well, no, oh my goodness. but some um, that but they had to restrain them and they were in the middle of a flight so they were like the only thing they had on the flight was duct tape so they were like well i guess this is gonna have to do <laughs> and then they took duct taped her to the seat it was a guy his name i don't want to say his name i don't know it did oh, with a woman too it's a guy uh, there was a guy and a woman oh, okay were they on the same flight together no uh <laughs> Uh, can we also talk about was groping women so that was fine oh, he could okay, be done okay yeah, i don't the, know what the, the woman the, yeah Fuck they it. must have some like the so i know there's the air marshal who you know there's a secret passenger or whatever and they have like a gun on them or whatever mm. um just in case something goes down but do they have handcuffs on them just in case as well I mean, not. i don't <laughs> think so i think I don't think so. I think they just have a, like a weapon and... Well, they can't have a weapon because um, they can't have any like arsenal like guns or well, I anything mean, like that, that. That they might have like, because uh, I think they can have a pistol, but not like, you know, they can't have like anything bigger than that. Well, no, they can't have, because if by any chance it hits any other part of the aircraft, they could risk losing cabin pressure. Wow, well, that's true. So I do think they probably have a taser at most. Probably. You were right. It was American Airlines, a duct tape a woman. Mm -hmm. I think it was because it was during the heat of COVID and she refused to put her mask on, like back on, because she had it on when they got on the plane, but then she refused to put it on, I think, or something like that. I know it was COVID related. And then they were, and then she was throwing a fit. So they were like, you know what? To hell with this. You don't get paid enough. Get the duct tape. Brenda, get the tape. <laughs> I mean, I can understand what, after reading, I can understand why they kind of taped her. I'm kind of on the airline side. Both these stories, um, I can kind of see now why they're duct taping passengers to their seat. I'm not so upset. I'm sure there's a, one or two reasons where it, it, Frontier Airlines and American Airlines will duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, trans- trans- right, Jonathan, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say transitioning from the duct tape uh, can we talk about Anna's fear of the rain? That was annoying. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to lie. I was like, if this woman don't get up from the middle of the street, all right, it's, like, and, it's just rain. And why doesn't, why doesn't she live somewhere like Arizona? 
why where it some, doesn't rain. Like what, look, rain she, doesn't. she doesn't want to move from her house. And but she's also, like, what, what kind of rain Anna acts do? like that? She was she she a painter. Paint- I know, but I'm saying she hasn't painted in years. So how does she have money to continue to pay bills for this big in house? The, in this type of world, money doesn't exist for those type of people. <laughs> they made like two hundred. in a friend's world. They made like two hundred million off of one painting. She's she's all good. She said this woman's buying enough wine to stock an entire winery, and she still could afford to pay her. Oh bills. my god. <laughs> How, like the way she would make the chicken casserole every episode, <laughs> I, was about I got too. nauseous. That drove me crazy. One, okay, I found this out, and it is apparently a common practice that I've learned in certain households. They don't wash their chicken. They don't wash their yeah. meat. White households. I learned that. I trying not. I was trying not to. <laughs> But yes, it's apparently the problem. Some Listen, of the we're, oh, we're a podcast of all minority people. So right, right, we know enough. what we're talking about. They don't they wash their chicken because somebody said, oh, that's how you like spread the germs around because the water splashes everywhere. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Who, why are you not washing chicken? And then another person was like, oh, it cooks off the germs. I was like, no, no, you need to wash. There's like literally a layer of film. It's like slime if you don't wash it off sometimes. That's old chicken. But still, I found that out and I'm so horrified. Like people apparently don't wash their legs either. I learned that too off of TikTok. Or at least a horrifying amount. They're like the water and soap runs down. You don't need to wash them. And that always disturbs me now too. Um, I've learned too much about the other side. <laughs> <laughs> How the other half lives. Yeah, they don't wash their chicken and they don't wash their legs. Um, <laughs> but it's also like the way... I guess I haven't seen a casserole been made in so long. It just looks so clumpy. Like she's just throwing everything in there and it's all just clumps. Of it looked food. a little dry. It looked a little dry. It looks My so thing dry. is, I'm like, I, I, like, and I excuse my friend, but I did say it out loud as I was watching the show. Like after that third time when she put her hands on the bear thing I was so and burned her hands, I was like, get some other mitts, bitch. <laughs> like, for God's sake, it'll save your hands. You're gonna get third degree burns. She should have gotten third degree burns every day. She burned her hands on those things, <laughs> or at least she should have grown it up. Because like when you work in a kitchen, you eventually develop calluses where you can grab shit real quick and throw it down. But this woman just kept burning it, and no calluses, no nothing. But it's just I, the after the third, like she kept spilling it and just like destroying these. Spots. I'm like, how many of these? <laughs> how many of this set do you have? And it was the same. It was the same dish. It was the same every dish. time. And although it was poetic justice, though, when like she's fighting Emma at the end, and Emma's like, it ever takes the dang casserole, and I was like, not the casserole. And then she smashes it across her head, and knocks her out. I was like. You know what though? It's poetry. It rhymes. <laughs> she deserves yeah, But then she ends up stabbing. Casserole. Then she ends up stabbing Emma with the piece of the dish. It just was funny to me. I was just like, "You gonna knock me out my own casserole?" <laughs> I was like, "You keep breaking the dish. Now the dish is gonna break you." <laughs> no, I thought that too. Like every time, the first thing I watched, I was like, "My problem is the casserole." I don't even know if there's gonna be anything wrong with the actual show, but my problem is now with this just casserole. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact the way it's being made she's not cleaning anything and it was just she's breaking that same dish over and over how many casserole dishes do you what uh, what what budget do you think they had for casserole dishes? oh do what budget like, you oh. mean what's the budget oh, like how many of those casserole dishes they actually had yeah they must like, have had at least like 50 because <laughs> they knew they were going to smash them right i'm right. like you know at least you need four solid takes mm-hmm. but like well, technically three, because she does eat like one, or I guess two. Well, there's the, oh is Gibson okay? He's, he's cute. He, well, he wants me to throw the toy. He's, he's just, just looking at you gross. like, just so you know, I do have nipples. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, casserole. Um, <laughs> anyway. Oh, yes gonna keep asking the, like what the hell is with this nipples discussion like what, I, what is going I, on if the you, one thing i will say about that you, real quick though is i've never heard the word nipple being said so much in my life than it has been in the last 45 minutes audience <laughs> I never if you, want to go back to that audience if you give us <laughs> seven five star ratings within the next week we will tell you that story on. No, we gotta week. do something more YouTube centric. 
if this video gets at least a thousand likes, <laughs> we will explain the origin of this conversation. <laughs> there we go. We said it now. Never if you've made it this far in the review anyway and, and actually found out that gap, good for you. <laughs> um, I have to say, uh, back to the show, I have to say also Kristen Bell and Mary Holland's uh, chemistry though as like friends, because for the mo- a big chunk of the, of the show, I was like, why are y'all friends? But then after Anna's trying to like get her life together and they just actually sit down and have a discussion, I was like, no, you guys are friends. They have great chemistry amongst each other. Like they almost feel like they're sisters mm-hmm. um, with how playful their banter is and stuff. They did a great job. Um, and Sloan was a very likable character as well. I think mm-hmm. she played her role really well. Yeah, Mary Holland's uh, those, great. Those, the first time those... I saw her was in uh, that Christmas movie with um, Kristen Stewart and- uh... She just likes working with Kristen. Oh, um, happiest uh, season. I'm on her page right now. Yeah, that's the first. Uh, and she was great in that too. So uh, I hope to see her in more things. Also, I... can we? Oh, go ahead. Alex. No, no, you're fine. I was just saying I haven't seen that movie so, and I want to watch it. Do you mean to? <laughs> um, can, we, can we talk about her voiceovers? They had me dying throughout the entire thing. They were so nope. dumb. They if were you just don't, like, <laughs> she said, she said, if you don't risk anything, you'll get to the bottom of nothing. If you don't get to the bottom of anything, you'll risk everything. And like, they were all in that same like, voice. What? what? What does that even mean? <laughs> Whose book are you writing? <laughs> and you see, she had those books. What were they? It was like, like the woman in the lake. Or the woman on the lake, I think. Oh, was, yeah, yeah, those. It was, mm-hmm. yeah, it was just all those that were like the woman on the something, the woman near the train. Mm-hmm. The, the spoofy titles. Right, right. <laughs> but, and when she would say bingo after everything she found. <laughs> I just, I, yeah, which I love. The, my favorite char- uh, side character, though, Lighthouse Guy. When he's just like, he's, <laughs> when she's like, yeah, I'm recording. So when are you, I, my name is. <laughs> So and so, I'm the runner of this lighthouse. Okay, I forgot uh, about him completely. I didn't think about him at all. You're right. It's just, it's just how funny he was. Like he tried to get his 15 minutes of fame, and it's like, <laughs> calm it down, man. He, he, wanted, he wanted his. He wanted his 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 feature. He wanted, and who? What journalist records? With a cell phone, like they record just well, you with a cell phone. Now. No, they, they would either record like through the voice notes or they would have a professional camera crew a lot of the time. Or they would at least record in, in uh, land, not uh, not portrait mode. They would at least record in landscape. I don't know, John. I'm not sure the modern day. Everybody films everything landscape. I mean, portrait mode now. But right? not reporters. Who's, I promise no. you that. Who is filming <laughs> portrait style? Everyone on TikTok. It's the TikTok generation. You can't even know TikTok. TikTok yeah, no, no. TikToks are different though. And it, TikToks only allow you to, to like record that direction. That's what I'm saying. It's the TikTok generation. She's Everybody not recording for that. a TikTok though. <laughs> I know she's, she's not, like a professional. But I'm just saying, you know, maybe she's, she's like, appealing to the generation. You, this is a woman who spends all of her time on Instagram. Okay. And right. You so know she, what should... she can't record on landscape on either. Instagram. <laughs> yes, she can. No, you can't. Have, yeah, you can. You, well, you can't. You can't put a story up, but you or can rather, put a. You, you can, can put a post. Record something on landscape and then post it. But if you're recording something on Instagram, like for your um, what's it called? Story. Uh, story. It has to be portrait. You can't record That's on fair. Instagram landscape. So you know. Also, either I way, that, she was a fraud. I was worried for a sec that she was going to post those sexy pictures on her normal Instagram, and I was like, "Your parents follow this. Don't do that." <laughs> I said, not about sexy photos but i think about certain things i post to be like my mom is gonna say something to me if i post something like this so i like don't bother uh <laughs> but this oh go ahead i was gonna say but uh i love that aspect though of like also this is gonna make people second guess like watching this show makes you second guess because uh you know how you post things because watching it, I was like, is this what it's like to watch you 
Like the, yes, the you. Yes, the whole exactly. Time That's I'm what I was watching, thinking. I was like, I haven't seen you, but based off other people's descriptions of what it's like to watch you, I think this is what it feels like. <laughs> More so the first season of you, because the first season you'll be like, I'm deleting all my social media. <laughs> but <laughs> but after that, not so much. Um, but yes, that's the, when you mentioned that the social media and everything, I was like, that's exactly like you, this, the first season of you. But did you also think, I was thinking throughout the whole thing, this is definitely a COVID show. Like it was definitely filmed in COVID. And this is the clearest example that I could tell because of the like minimal amount of cast members, which I appreciated a lot because I feel like they didn't just bring in random people just for the sake of a plot twist or just for the sake of bringing them in. Like even Rex, who was brought in what, like episode three or four, he was he was set up from the first episode. And very few shots actually have more than four people in them, as far mm-hmm. as the scenes. Like you have, even when the cops come to her house, they only bring one police officer and the detective. That's it. Right. And I just, although I love... <laughs> I love uh, it's uh, her name's Christina Anthony. She played Detective Lane. When he asked for, he's like, "Hey, ma'am, real quick, uh, the chick casserole looks good. Can I get a slash?" She's looking at him like, "Are you sick? I am in the middle of questioning this girl." And you asked for like, casserole. I can uh, like, she got like real. I like, thought about that too, and I'm like, "You pushed her way in and demanded a cup of coffee." Like Kristen's character sat down and she's like, "You know what? I really want a cup of coffee." Oh, okay. <laughs> now, I, now I want some sugar. There's a please. You can say please or do right. you mind? She's like, I really like some sugar. If you don't mind, it's like how it usually goes is, yeah. hey, would you like a cup of coffee? Oh yes, I would love that. Yeah, but She's then when he asks, her. <laughs> but when food is asked, that's too far. We're doing an investigation. <laughs> how you dare ask for this? Probably three day old chicken casserole. <laughs> If I okay, if there was I ain't one even character been in the refrigerator, it's been sitting out too. Right. <laughs> if there was one character that got on my nerves a little bit, it was Detective Lane because when she first, uh, when when she first reported the murder, and all of these things were adding up, they were making perfect sense. But she's like, "Oh no, it was this. It was that. It was this. It was that." No, don't worry about it. No, she didn't get murdered. She's in Seattle, but they don't even fly to Seattle. Worst what? detective ever. Because here it is, Anna. It literally it took her little to no effort to find out that that airline don't go to the North Pacific Northwest. L- literally, she found out in passing. She was walking <laughs> through the airport and saw that it said on a sign. <laughs> coming to the west coast soon and and figured it out you mean to tell me you detective lane didn't take seriously someone's been murdered and she hasn't been seen and on top of that you would think here's my thing if i'm a detective right Mm -hmm. and the girlfriend to a dude who as who recently has been part of another murder like another accidental case of a woman who just who drowned and he was the prime suspect even if he was acquitted it's or uh, or uh, not acquitted because they didn't go to trial but um Released even if he was not um, no longer a cute, person of interest no longer a right. person of interest that would pique your interest because it'd be like okay that's now two girls in a row one drowned the other one's missing and you and i have to take your word that she's in seattle I'm going to look into this. Maybe you don't think he did it, but you'll at least look into it. She don't even bother to do that. She just assumes eh, you're, you're crazy and you're a drunk. <laughs> and I'm just like, that's the worst detective skills you could possibly have. Also, speaking of that airline, that 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 uh, customer service dude was really rude. I'm like, what? even if I'm well, not have flying, you, I'm ever called like, you fitting to a- get a, like, a, like a, a re- report from me. Your company about to find out about you. Have you ever? <laughs> Cheddar's just attacking me in the background. Uh, you, uh, all our animals look, are just uh, a murder trying to be committed. Look at that! Look at that! He's trying he's to commit a murder back there. Eating, <laughs> eating your shirt. That's my figure. He's got my oh, figure in your hand. <laughs> um, have you ever called an airline? They rude as hell. You know no. why? Because you know you the, they have your money. They already have like hundreds of dollars of your money. You'll just take the abuse to get whatever you want or whatever you can get out of them. 
not Alaska. Is, Alaska Airlines, they have good customer service, though. Not always. Because due to the fact, because this recently happened to me, I was trying to get to my mom in Oregon because of an emergency. Couldn't get there because I literally was trying to fly out the day of the snowstorm. When I got on the plane, the snowstorm hit, we couldn't take off. But because my plane technically took off eight hours later and it wasn't officially canceled because other people stayed on the flight, I didn't get my money back. I got credited though. So now I have to go fly somewhere before December. Mm. But like, I couldn't just, yeah. And I was like, technically, because my plane took off. They're like, yeah, it took off eight hours later. Had you stayed on the tarmac? For eight hours, like some of those people did, you would have gotten, you could have gotten your money back or something like that, or you could have gotten your flight, but they're like, eh, so not always. I do admit Alaska Airlines, I do love them. I prefer to travel with them above all the other airlines. As far as I know, they don't have a history of duct taping anybody. (laughs) Not that I know of, not that I know of. So. Awesome. I I, like, uh, this is the last character I I have to talk about as far as like hating, but couldn't stand carol i could not stand carol so much i was hoping Wait, which carol one was carol be- carol, was carol oh, the the one I, I he kept trying all. to like set her up with people and was just like first of all i was like uh, like I, I, I was about to treat carol like they do tommy on um on martin you know how the running joke with tommy is tommy you ain't got no job because you never see what he does throughout the whole show yeah mm-hmm. i was about to be like carol you ain't got no man because she keep talking about scott but ain't nobody seen scott ever Where's Scott at? You keep mentioning Scott by name even, like all the time. Which, you ain't got no man. Get out of my business, Carol. Well, Scott was always which, at work. That was the whole thing. He was always at work, Scott. Oh, work. how convenient. How convenient Scott's always at work. Don't nobody ever seen Scott. <laughs> which she was, I don't, he is on one today. I don't know what it is, but she was, uh, so Anna was justified in her freak out. Maybe she, couldn't have she could have left the uh, she knife to have the, tool. the knife in her hand I, right, I mean, she could have left that but, but she mean, was it, justified it in the freak people out. do forget that they have like you know what they're doing when they're like angry so they mm-hmm. like you you might be cooking and have a knife in your hand and forget that you're holding it right and then carol she talking all this mess at the grocery store and then she becomes the victim just because she felt threatened because of uh the tool in anna's hand and then Later, Anna apologizes to Carol and she's like, oh, thank you so much. I accept it or whatever. But she never apologized. It's kind of a half apology when you behind that. You say, F you, Carol, and then just walk away. You know what I mean? (laughs) But then but then Carol never apologized for trash talking her at the grocery store, even though all she said. Because Carol (laughs) ain't sorry. In all defense of Carol was what she's saying. Was what she That's said also was a wrong. fair point, though. Carol's like, not wrong. Like she you, she, you did, saw... she did. She did go dirty by being like, "Oh, she set up Scott's friend." Like, screw you. Like the woman's still going through some trauma. Leave her alone. But was she wrong about the wine addiction? Was she wrong about like her flirting with the neighbor, even though the neighbor's got a girlfriend? She didn't know at the time. Wait, no, she did. She would have... no, she didn't. She, she didn't know at the time until the girlfriend wasn't... showed up. Yeah, but to till... be to her credit, she didn't ask either. She just assumed he was single. (laughs) If you're interested in somebody, that's kind of one of those things you do. They would literally just have one meeting. Makes it seem obvious, like you would ask. But he was giving them flirty eyes, though. He was. He was just being nice. He's being neighborly, especially considering she didn't interact with him first. She interacted with his with her his daughter first. But they had a whole dinner, though. You would think at one point he would say. Oh, yeah, that's, 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 that's a fair like, point. That Any man up. invite every dude knows if you invite a girl over to your place to have dinner, especially with your kid, like it's probably a yeah. safe bet. You assume that she, you, like, you're she or would like assume even talking about your life. You would mention, oh yeah, here's my girlfriend that I've been seriously dating, right? You know, or or, or just in passing, some- in passing, like my girlfriend got me a, some milk went to went to the grocery store and got some milk there you just, can put it in there when you mentioned like yeah my wife passed away but my girlfriend has been making it a lot easier you know what i mean something mm. like that um so i'll all right i'll give you that one but i will say look carol's not because i'm like you know how you know when you have a drinking problem when you invite someone else over you offer them a drink 
And your idea of offering them a drink is to fill the wine glass. Oh, with like the right. with the full bottle. Yeah. Right. With the full bottle. And then like two of them. And then you drink yours and then get confused when they not drinking you theirs. It's like, what makes you think I, I, I want to drink like this the, much? The you way got with a problem. Rex, when she was pouring for Rex, she just poured two bottles. She's just like, that's what I'm talking right. about. Is when she poured it for Rex, when Rex is looking like, um, you gonna stop at some point? I don't want all that. <laughs> I don't need all that. I, I just asked for a little bit. Well, of they drink. were about to just talk about like if his girlfriend com- killed herself or or didn't kill herself or was murdered, wasn't murdered, planned a murder or did not plan a murder. So like, I would need a bottle of wine or something with that too. Okay, but that's for you. Why would you pour that for someone else? You would pour them probably like at least a little bit. And if they asked for more, then you pour some more. You wouldn't just assume. They just have it. I don't have to get up again. Here's a whole (laughs) ass bottle. And those are some big cubs. Do yeah, those are those those are those cups that bottle? hold. I mean, yeah, you hold see, a whole bottle. Did you see the bowl with how many corks she had? Even the detective was like, God dang, fairness, like you drink that much?" That was like a lot of people during the beginning of quarantine. <laughs> that doesn't make that, it right. That, that just means that was a reality. Wine bottle. Food. Yeah, that was a sad reality for a lot of people. <laughs> uh, <clears> but I'm just. I'm just saying, way. although this show is so well written, like just to get into some of the technicals, we've talked a lot about the story plots and characters, but uh, to get into the technicals though, this show is really well written, both in um, just visual cues, because it's like, you know, you got the the wine, the cork uh, stuff, the books in the background when she's reading The Woman in the Lake and stuff like that. You got the um, just small cues of things that are happening around the house. Like it's a very well written show, both in the action notes and things that are like you know that are just on the page but then like dialogue even it's very funny um when it wants to be but it also is very uh thriller-esque when it wants to be so this is a very good script actually so i'm hoping a lot more people watch this show so they can actually do a season two because i think it's actually a really good dark comedy thriller um search party is the last one and at least they, they got five seasons so I feel like, but that show's ended. Like the fifth season was their final season. So well, there's there's a I wonder show if that, this will fill the void. You know, there's also a show that seems like it might be in this same vein, the After Party on Apple TV Plus. I think I was That's talking about it last true. week. I haven't oh, watched yeah. that yet, but I've heard it, that it's similar. It literally came out I think the same day as this, uh, but it's with Tiffany Haddish, Dave Franco, and it's like an ensemble cast, and somebody gets Tiffany murdered. Tiffany Haddish and Dave Franco. That's such a weird. I know <laughs> it's a, it's an interesting you know what, combo, though? but they, they. I didn't think Tiffany Haddish, Melissa McCarthy, and uh, Elizabeth Moss in the kitchen was gonna be as good as it turned out to be, and I like that movie a lot. Oh, I enjoyed that movie. Oh yeah, me I did too. Watch but it. Didn't, that was really good. But didn't it like it didn't receive great reviews though? It didn't do well, but I thought it was neat. I liked it. Same, it I enjoyed it. To see those three women, well, not Elizabeth Moss so much because she does dramas all the time, but Melissa McCarthy and Tiffany Haddish in different roles. I love us. when they give uh, Melissa McCarthy serious roles because mm-hmm. she's she such great. A, she's so powerful, mm-hmm. and like there's a strength in her that like when given the proper dramatic roles, she portrays so amazingly. And I wish they would give her something a little more serious. Although my favorite movie will be that movie she was in, uh, where she was a spy. Is it spy? Because that's is it just called call. spy? Yes. Just, <laughs> all right. Then my favorite movie of hers is Spy, because she got to be serious, but she was still like fun. And then also, what? I just I love well, what was the guy who the guy in it who kept being dramatic? Jason Statham. Yes, Jason Statham. His whole interaction with her every single time was like the best. Mine will probably be Bridesmaids Forever because she's just stands out in Bridesmaids. Oh, uh, do you mean, so um, wait, do you mean, uh, um, oh my gosh. Uh, no. uh, wait, because Tiffany had a season in Bridesmaids. No, we're talking about oh. Melissa McCarthy. We're talking about oh, Melissa McCarthy. Oh, okay, sorry. No, no not to- Tiffany Haddish. No, I mean, Tiff- my favorite role from Tiffany Haddish will probably be, probably is The Kitchen, to be quite honest. Um, but before that, it was probably Girls Trip. Mm-hmm, uh, girls trip never saw girls trip it's good excuse me it looked in her it's the black bridesmaids right <laughs> i wasn't a big fan of bridesmaids so i don't know how much i'd enjoy it to be honest uh yeah i don't know it really is very similar to bridesmaids it's, uh, as far as like comedy goes um 
the dynamics are a little different as far as what the characters want because Bridesmaids is very Kristen Wiig centric and then all the other girls are just there for comedy for most of it. Um, but versus Girls Trip, everybody's got their own plot going on and has their own issues. Um, so that but, I might enjoy more. I'm not a fan of Kristen uh, Wiig. I will say that openly. I'm just not a fan of her. I think it's just dang. I was roles. about to. I was about to suggest a Kristen Wiig movie next week. No, I'm I think just it's the I'm roles just kidding. she the roles yeah. she takes because she often gets like put in the same role as the same person. Um, but I yeah, think but she's what great because when they tried to step her out of that role, she but the one when she was on part the, the part cat. <laughs> Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. Well, Woman. it depends on the movie because Wonder Woman, not so much. But Skeleton Twins, great movie. Love that film, and she's anyway. great in it. But anyway, uh, this show is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I, I like just to do my final thoughts as we wrap up here. Um, I love the show. I think the writing is sharp. It's solid. It understands uh, the assignment very well. Uh, it's it's a great parody of movies just like this that are this kind of lifetime thriller-esque type story um i think everybody acting wise does a great job of just being either great parodies of like those stereotypical characters you find in these movies or just being their own character because i think sloan is supposed to be the stereotypical best friend character but she also is just a good character on her Mm -hmm. own um same thing with characters like uh, Carol and stuff where they're just good characters on their own that just make you laugh. So overall, I think it's really interesting. Uh, I would love to see a season two of this just to see where it goes from here or if any characters come back because I would love to see Rex come back and create a different dynamic between uh, uh, Anna and Douglas's relationship because at the end of this show, they're back together. But I guess it's been a year and Rex has been released and he hasn't shown up since then so well like he's just gotten time. released so like well no but it's so. been a year because he got instantly released after they uh, suspected anna so he hasn't uh, shown up oh yeah he kind of just left he's well wouldn't you after realizing everything that's kind of been going on i'm just saying it seemed I would like be like great it seemed I'm like out. they had chemistry i mean th- listen any man who's prepared who's naked with an apron on in your kitchen prepared to cook you breakfast like elaborate breakfast at that. It's not like he was just going to make some toast. Like he was going to make like French almond, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? For this girl. That means he like, you know, she must got that snapper or something. Cause he, <laughs> cause she trapped him. Cause he was ready to just, they probably get on one knee and propose. Like, or he just wanted a good breakfast and there was the supplies. I'm just saying, I'm just <laughs> saying it seemed like he really liked her. So I feel like Rex should have came back at some point and caused some issues for their relationship. But Maybe regardless, that'll be season two. Maybe. Um, but regardless, uh, I'm I would love to see a season two of this to see where it goes from here, to see uh some return characters, but also see some new characters because it looks like we're going into a whole new mystery uh going forward. Uh if I give this uh, at least this season a grade, um, I would give it uh, a solid uh uh A plus. I don't really have any complaints um from my my side of things. What about you, Jonathan? What's your grade range going on? Nice. I would have to agree. I didn't really like have any major critiques of this. Uh, even uh, 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 okay, it's it's late on a Friday night, <laughs> and Gibson is terrorizing this toy. Um, uh, I didn't have any major critiques of this, if any. Um, I like I mentioned, I really like all of the callbacks to all of the horror and thriller tropes of the past. I love the fact that she said bingo um, every single time she found something new. And that's where the season ended as well with her saying bingo. Um, Her voiceovers, I was cackling at these voiceovers. They were super hilarious (laughs) because they were just it would be that moment of comedy and then you would go straight into okay advancing the plot which I really appreciated appreciated that balance um I Michael Ely really like because you know he's usually playing like like the handsome lover and everything um but in this like I mentioned he was looking like a a 90s professor 
Um, but <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, I just really enjoyed this. I had a fun time, and that's all that you can ask for from me in a show. If I have a fun time, then I'm going to enjoy it a lot. I hope they have a season two. I will enjoy season two as well. I'm sure if one is made and uh, it seems like it won't be hard to make a show like this because like I mentioned, uh, this is very much a like COVID safe show or it's a, it's an it's easily made in COVID it seems like. Yeah. Um, they didn't have a need for too many extras. They didn't have right. like the neighborhood packed with people and kids walking around all the time. Exactly, exactly. Um, and she was, you know, quarantining, I guess, by herself. Uh, so we can we can relate. Yeah. <laughs> um, <Thank> Alex. You. <laughs> uh, you know, actually, I would give this an A too. Um, it was clearly well written, well thought out. And I feel like, because I did read an article about it, they're like, Kristen Bell wants you to remember that this is kind of a parody. And I think it's just so much like again as i said before uh like screen mm -hmm. where it was supposed to be mocking you know the shows of these sad women who you know are either divorced widowed or have some big tragedy who just sit in the windows and drink the a vast amount of alcohol but like scream it just ended up being so good at standing on its own that you forget it was kind of supposed to be a parody and now look at scream now there's going on to a they're going on to uh fifth, fifth movie fifth movie just don't want to see but um and just like this the it was so well written the characters were all realistic you weren't like you were annoyed by carol but carol was a very realistic character you know somebody mm -hmm. you had met where they just you know bad mouth you and then you're like are you kidding me but like she's well enough like where you can't really go at her fully because then you look like the bad guy as she did mm -hmm. um and you're right with sloan she was very it was that she could have looked like that you know stereotypic best friend that has no life outside this best friend but she did she presented her own life and then when the character had moments of like like with the instagram the creeping she was ready to call out like hey this isn't healthy like you really need to stop things you know um and kristen bell love her the only complaint was that chicken casserole, an entire thing. It like literally grossed me out. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, the show was actually so just well done. And you're right. You could tell that it was filmed a bit in COVID. A lot of characters actually stayed a pretty good, de decent distance from each other. And only like at times, like when it came to like group shots, it was a minimum of like three people very close together. Even the cops kept their distance. They didn't follow her. When she went to go get the sugar in the pantry, they didn't try to follow her into the pantry. They just let her walk in there and walk out. Also, so how big like, is that pantry? You could just walk in. And right. <laughs> that was, she, she, there was, was two people pantry. in there. There was two people in that pantry. Also, that was annoying. I was like, can you move out the way? I'm trying to get the dang sugar. Move. <laughs> That's true. He did not need to back up. I mean, I get why they did it, but like he Apparently did not the need cops to knew the whole time that he was in there. I guess. Well, know, maybe it would it would help if he didn't constantly open and close the shutters. Right. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I'm going to the pantry. Doosh. <laughs> so, like, yeah, in a quiet, silent, giant home, I can hear the whooshing of the, like, little blades. Although I'm glad they did add that line in there because I said it when he's, like, looks at the, when he breaks in for the first time and he's, like, looking at a jar, he's, like, just so you know, if you say anything, I'll kill her. And I'm, like, jokes on you. She's already dead. Yeah, I wasn't oh, prepared for her to now. do that. He looks so miserable when she's like, she's already dead. He's like, oh, oh. <laughs> well, that's like, sad. Like, I know I broke in and just threatened you and your, like, child. But knowing that she's dead now, I feel like the asshole. I may have <laughs> come in here and broken into your home. But now I feel bad about breaking into your home. It's like that vine from Long Beach Griffey when he's, like, robbing a dude and he takes the credit card. He checks the account. He's just like, hey, hey, like... I'm sorry, bro. Here, take this, take this, take this card back. I'm sorry. Listen, I know I'm like, I know I'm broke because I'm out here robbing dudes, but if you need a few dollars, like I, I can do, I can help you out. You hungry? <laughs> like, there's another guy like that where the guy comes up to another guy at the ATM. He's like, give me all your money. He's like, there's like $2 in my account. He's like, ah, oh. and he starts taking out like money. He's like, here you go. He's like, oh, no, no, you don't have to. He's like, no, Merry Christmas, man. I'm like, here you go. <laughs> like the robber hands him. He's like, there you go. I'm, I'm going to go now. Um, but, also, 
quick, sorry, quick tidbit. Will Ferrell is also an executive producer on this. Yeah, Will Ferrell's been getting into kind of being in the background of a lot of stuff, uh, as yeah. of which is a smart move. Like, I think a lot of people have realized, like a lot of actors and actresses, like they've realized, you know where the money's at? Being behind the camera. Like, like why do all this work when all I can, all I have to do is start writing checks and put people in rooms to meet other also, people to make greatness happen. Like that's Also easy. with like Will Ferrell, his comedy was a lot more like physical and like, you know, being with his shirt off, kind of making jokes about his body and his appearance and the roles he was in. At a certain point in age, you're like, I really don't want to take my shirt off <laughs> in front of people because I know that's there's I mean, there's a purpose. You are making fun of me because, you know, of the physique type. But like at a certain age, I know you probably feel like I don't want to have people purposely laugh at my body, even though I'm presenting it in that manner. Mm-hmm. I like to do something more dignified than standing there with my gut standing out, rubbing my belly. That I've seen him doing about every film he has ever been in. <laughs> well, I'm thinking um, about also like the Smiths too, like Will and Jada, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, where they, they're behind the scenes and a lot more stuff these days than they are in front of the camera. Um, but I mean, hey, did sense. you forget about Matrix <laughs> Resurrections? Okay. Yeah, but I mean, even still, I'm sure the same year she filmed that, she probably produced like three or four shows <laughs> or or movies. Also, I feel like a lot of people want to forget that movie because even like, <laughs> they're not getting no seat. You know what's surprising though? Here it is. You know, we live in a world where Matrix, the Matrix Four, isn't getting a sequel. You know, the reboot failed. But you know what is getting a sequel? Mortal Kombat. They're officially <laughs> doing a Mortal Kombat too. That's, that's your only, Malcolm and Marie. I know, which that means you know Cole what? Young's coming back. If I got to suffer another- through another <laughs> Batman movie, you got to suffer through another Mortal Kombat movie. I do not. I don't feel like I'm going to suffer. I, I feel like it's, I feel like I'm going to give gonna the doubt that they did the groundwork so now they can finally just make a good Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I'm gonna suffer. I fucking hate that, man. <laughs> You'll make it. And I will anyway. trash talk it the entire time we're reviewing it. Anyway, socials. Let's socials. go. Jonathan, yes, you, go. You can, find, <laughs> you can find me at Jonathan Keys on Twitter, Instagram, wherever you please. Tomorrow, tune in. Follow me on social media. and Tune into the Virtual Monuments live stream. That will be tomorrow at 12 is it no it's at 1 p.m 1 p.m didn't i put it up on the instagram too you did you You okay yeah you can find it also on our instagram i will repost it again tomorrow morning or later tonight as a fresh reminder and uh alex where can people find you at you can find me on tiktok and instagram at alex and nobody i also handle the tiktok account for the podcast where you say little tidbits of the show and you know other things that we do you probably won't get any clue to still about the dog nipples but i will post <laughs> other parts of this episode and other episodes little favorite fun things uh the first ones to die is also where you can find us on every other social media instagram twitter uh and it also is the name of every um on every streaming site you can find such as spotify uh, apple podcast and even google podcast all right yeah, and Amazon it. Music too, and Poppy. So come and look us up. Give us reviews. Mark us five stars. Let us know what you think. Send us an email at the first one to die at gmail.com. What about you, Jerome? Where can we find you and what you're doing? You can find me at not Jerome Rent on Instagram as well as at RoboZoo Media and at Jerome underscore the underscore show. Um, I have a lot of Instagrams. Uh, you can uh, also, if you want to see extra content. Uh, outside of the audio version of the podcast you can go to our youtube channel at the first ones to die in which you can see extra stuff like behind the scenes things vlogs gaming videos book reviews mini reviews for movies and tv shows we didn't get a chance to do a full podcast of all types of stuff and of course as always video versions of every podcast we've done so far so if you want to see our lovely mugs go on over there and check it out Um, With that being said, tune in next week for our Valentine's Day special. We don't quite know what we're reviewing yet, but that's part of the surprise. So, you know, you got time to just try and imagine what you think we're going to review for Valentine's Day. (laughs) I was going to do the hard thing, but I 
Oh, there we go. There we go. It there looks a go. little weird from the. There we go. There you go. I forgot how to do it for a second. I actually don't think I've ever you, made. You, you I was like doing like these weird like. I mean, I was, people, I, was go, I was going back people to my Chicago done, roots right there for a done second. The, done the like fingers. Too. Yeah, but I was going back to my Chicago roots there for a second. Something else is coming out. Um, yeah, join us for Valentine's Day for the three single people. <laughs> Let's see what Single we have to say about it. Singles Awareness Day. Woo. I think. All right. All right. We'll see y'all next week and have a great week. Bye. Peace out.